right now, we would love to not move. We love it here. We love the, the area. We love our home. I like what I do for a living. My husband has a small business here. You know, all of these reasons we would love to stay. I love New York. New York's a beautiful state. You know, you've got all four seasons. The people are nice, you know, with the lake, and it's, it's beautiful. I've lived here all my life. But with the politics and the taxes, it's kind of forced me out. Summertime here is crazy. It's, it's you know, people come to run in the, the back in the canal path. They boat. Uh, they got the festival here, the canal days. There's you know, a lot of things that happen in this area that makes it really nice to be here. The community uh, need places like this. You know, my family grew up in Rochester, and I grew up in Rochester, of course, uh, and uh, it's a wonderful community, and I love being in New York State because this is where I grew up. We have had uh, discussions amongst our own regarding is this the best location for a business to flourish? If I could pick this place up right now and drop it anywhere else in the United States, I think the business would flourish more than in New York. I mean, I'm, I'm very concerned of where we're going. I mean, the current tax structure cannot stay the way it is. It just can't. It's not sustainable. Yeah, if you're a new business, I mean, you get 10 years, no tax. So what are they doing for us? They've been paying here for 100 years, you know? They, they don't help us out. It'd be nice to get 10 years, no tax. If the taxes get much harder, I mean, if, if we can't make our mortgage payment, then we would either have to seriously consider downsizing, and I would think if we were going to downsize, we would probably do it someplace else. I'm fed up with it. I'm fed up with the politics here, so I'm going down to Virginia. Uh, be persistent. If you want to change something, you got to be persistent. It's uh, strength in numbers. So if you're by yourself, you really can't get much done. But if you got a lot of people with you, it seems like they listen. And just, you know, don't give up. Because if, you, if businesses give up, we're going to have a problem. A big problem. Well, in part it's expensive because there's a lot of expectations that New Yorkers have for a service-rich community that they live in. Uh, they want high-quality schools, uh, which largely we have in terms of public schools around the state. They want a sound and, uh, and uh, infrastructure system in terms of transportation and water treatment systems, et cetera. Uh, so I think people really expect and want a lot of service delivery. Of course, there's always the challenge of how to do that in the most economical way and keep the tax burden as low as possible as you're doing that. Well, <laughs> ask the person that actually has to pay the tax bill how, how great things are going. And with the property tax cap, uh, when you look at that, that actually started off as a Assembly Republican idea many years ago that eventually got put in place. But our uh, idea was not only do you have a property tax cap, you actually reduce costs so that you don't need uh, higher tax revenue and what's really happening now is you're putting municipalities and school districts in a bind because there's been no true cost reduction. The government is out of control. It's doing whatever it wants to do uh, regardless of what the state constitution prohibits them from doing and, or mandates that they do. We have a provision in here that says neither the state nor its municipalities can borrow money without voter approval. And we have local governments, state government, borrowing money all the time without voter approval. Our property taxes are easily, I think by fair measures, the highest in the country relative to home values. The basic reason for that, which is consistent throughout the state, basically, is there can be, it can be answered in two words, schools primarily, secondarily Medicaid. A third issue is collective bargaining and the laws governing contracting with public employee unions, uh, which also relates to the first, which is schools. 
Well, I actually got a tip from somebody that told me to look into how much schools were spending versus how many children they were actually teaching. And so we went back uh, five, ten, five, ten years, and we looked at budgets and we looked at enrollment. And what we found was that over a five-year period, with about uh, two exceptions, every single school district in Monroe County dropped its enrollment and every single one went up in budgets. The only backlash we got was from the superintendent of Webster Schools. He was the only person who really was not happy with our questions. All the viewers liked what we had to ask because I think they were asking the same thing. Why are we spending more money when we have fewer kids? Connie Young moved to Webster to help her daughter and son-in-law raise their three children. We as a family are putting three more back into Webster. So Connie and her family are doing their part. But since 2010, Webster Schools has 500 fewer students, but the district spends $14 million more. And wouldn't you like to know why this is the case, why we have fewer students, but that's but more budget. You, why do you have fewer students? Where did they go? And what's increasing your budget? Yes. That's why we're asking the question. But this is not just a Webster problem. And the truth is, Webster is not alone here. News 10 NBC went back five years. We looked at the enrollment and budgets of every single school district in the county, and here's what we found. Greece has 1,200 fewer students, but 14.6 million more in its budget. Fairport, 700 fewer students, 11 million more in its budget. And as we told you, Webster has 500 fewer kids, but a $14.2 million increase in its budget. In fact, with the exception of Brighton, which has more students, and East Rochester and Kendall, which have lower budgets, every single school district in Monroe County lost students, and every single district's budget went up by millions. Total countywide enrollment decline, 7,132. Total countywide increase in school budgets, $341 million. So we wanted to talk with Webster school leaders about why their district had one of the sharpest declines in students and one of the biggest budget increases. Remember, that's the number of additional taxpayer dollars they want to teach fewer students. On July 2nd, I emailed the Webster School District's communication director, spelling out our research and asking for an interview. With no reply, I went to the school board meeting, which is open to the public, to speak with the man in charge, Webster School Superintendent Carmen Gumina. And that's when the superintendent kicked us out. We no longer deal at all with Channel 10. So you need to leave the premises. I'm not. You need to leave the premises. Why? There is no, we, we no longer deal with Channel 10. Remember, all we wanted to do was ask Superintendent Gumina, why are you spending more when you have fewer students? And we gave him plenty of time to come up with an answer. What about that? You have to leave. I have to leave a public meeting. You have to leave a public meeting. Your channel 10 is not allowed in our front of So what do some school officials say is driving up the cost? A deputy superintendent in East Irondequoit claims that it's because of three reasons. Debt payment on school construction, payments to teacher and principal retirement plans, and employee health insurance. But let's compare New York to Massachusetts, a state that has some of the highest scoring schools in the country. In 2013, the average cost per student in Worcester County was $12,500. In the same year, the average cost per student in Monroe County was $18,716. Why is that? Uh, there's really two answers to that question. We employ more staff and we pay them more, not just salaries, but benefits. E.J. McMahon is the director of the Empire Center for Public Policy. And you've got to slow that down and you have to control staffing levels uh, in order to control school costs. It's that simple. But I asked him about the increased millions that local schools are spending on education. Doesn't that show a commitment on behalf of local school districts and local educational leaders to spend our money on education as opposed to other things? You can look at it any number of ways. School officials can describe this as a good thing that shows a greater commitment to education. The question is, are you getting good results for that money? I mean, if we're honest with ourselves, there's no such thing as a free lunch, and we have to ask ourselves, do we get what we pay for? And when, if you look at your property tax bill, somewhere between 65 and 85% of that goes to your schools. So are you happy with 
what your schools are doing? Are you happy with how your schools teach your children? And if you are, maybe you get what you pay for. So is it expensive? Yes. Is there lots of stuff that maybe we shouldn't have to pay for, shouldn't be mandated to pay for? Yes. But there's no such thing as a free lunch. People were shocked that this is actually what's happening. We know in New York State that we have the highest taxes, but to see that in Monroe County, we have a higher property tax rate than counties near New York City just didn't make sense to people. Joanne Neelands came to us for answers. While online, she found real estate listings for multi-million dollar homes in the Hamptons that have a lower property tax burden than what she's paying for her home in Greece. And her house is assessed at a lower value. Neelands question is simple, why? So we started digging, and here's a comparison for you. If you had a home in Suffolk County in East Hampton, your tax rate would be about $8. Here in the city of Rochester, the tax rate is about $38. For the sake of comparing apples to apples, Neelands would have to own a property worth $750,000 to pay in taxes, what she does on her home in Greece. So why the difference in tax burden? A much lower property value than in um, you know, downstate New York. So to raise a similar amount of per capita revenue on lower property values, the rate has to be significantly higher. I went to Governor Andrew Cuomo to ask what he is doing to even this out for homeowners in New York State. What are we doing to get the burden off the middle class for here in Western New York? We passed the first ever property tax cap, which caps, quote unquote, the property tax growth at about 2%. So that prevents it from going up and up and up in astronomical measures. But what can we do to get it lower so that the middle class taxpayer can afford it? You have to reduce the cost of government which we have done on the state side, or, and one of the ways you could reduce the cost of government is by actually consolidating governments or getting governments to share services. We have 10,500 governments. Some counties have 500 different governments. That's 500 police forces, 500 fire departments, 500 of everything. We need to find economies of scale. But when I started looking at how other states do it, I found that reducing the number of local governments doesn't guarantee you a lower tax bill. New Jersey is the only state that rivals New York in property taxes, and it has half as many local governments per capita as New York. And on the flip side of that, New Hampshire has significantly more local governments than New York, but lower taxes. Generally, the uh, international literature shows that consolidation does not save money. Whether you're talking about schools or local governments, there's just not empirical evidence support for unit consolidation to save money. In terms of service consolidation, we find cost savings about half the time. People come up to me all the time and say, why is this? Why are we taxed so much here in New York State? They look at their friends who maybe have already moved or just friends they know who live in other states, and it's not that way for them. So it's this kind of sense that they know it doesn't have to be like this, but it is, and they want to know why, and they want it to change.